Welcome everyone to 1928 Toulouse, France. The trial opened at Toulouse today before the court of a young nobleman, Pierre Grosset Rezac, son of the Count de Grosset Rezac. He was charged with the willful murder of his baby son. The facts of this case are dramatic in the extreme and have aroused intense interest in the whole region. Wealthy members of the old landed nobility, the Crozet Rezacs, live in their wondrous chateau. In 1924, a new housemaid came to the chateau. Her name was Josephine. She was pretty, age 22, married but separated. Pierre was living at the chateau and he was 30 years old. Josephine quickly became Pierre's mistress. In a few months, she was pregnant. She subsequently broke the news to her lover's severe aristocrat parents. The result was she was dismissed with a present of 2,000 francs, and another place was found for her at Toulouse. In August 1926, she gave birth to a boy, whereupon the Count Rezac sent her 200 francs in an unsigned letter. Meanwhile, Pierre married as befitted his rank and station. In celebration of the occasion, he sent Josephine 3,000 francs with the intimation that this was the last money she would ever receive from him or his. Time went by. Josephine, still in service, put her baby out to nurse, but the keep of her child, christened Pierre Guy Brunon, almost exceeded her wages. In desperation, in January 1928, she wrote to the, the Countess Crozet Rezac, begging her for help and soliciting a meeting at Toulouse Railway Station. The rendezvous was kept, but by Pierre himself. He was adamantly cold to her appeals. He refused to give her any money. The child must be handed over to public assistance. We must each lead our own lives. Josephine reluctantly had to assent. He had his motor car. They drove together to fetch the child and then on to public assistance. Their difficulties arose over the boy's age, 17 months, and other details. Pierre lost his temper and said he would find an orphanage himself. It was getting late and the housemaid Josephine had to be back at her place. Pierre D. Rizac dropped her there. The parting of mother and infant son was pathetic. She kissed him as he lay asleep in the back of the car and murmured a prayer for his happiness. That was all. Pierre drove on into the night. Presently, he is alleged to have stopped his car by the side of the canal, undressed the child, and wrapped it in a rug. Pierre Guy was sleeping so soundly that he did not awake. The father, it is stated, took the baby in his arms, went down to the water's edge, and threw the little naked body into the canal. He hid the child's clothing under the bridge and drove home to his ancestral chateau. The child's body was found the next day and recognized by officials at the public assistance. And this led Josephine to disclose the whole truth. Pierre confessed, but in self-defense alleged blackmail. At today's trial, he was defended by a famous barrister. The trial is expected to last three days. The verdict of the jury was awaited with passionate interest. The court was packed, and large crowds eager for the news waited outside. Counsel for the prosecution submitted that there was not the slightest ground for the insinuation of blackmail. He argued that the way in which Pierre carefully undressed the baby before carrying it down to the canal edge and throwing it into the icy water conclusively proved premeditation. He demanded the people's justice. The Advocate General painted Pierre's character as violent lazy and authoritative. His defects had led him to the crime. 
the Advocate General also declared that the crime was indisputably premeditated. Turning to the jury, he cried, I ask you to punish without indulgence, otherwise justice will be a mockery. He showed none. He demanded the death sentence. Pierre's lawyer laid stress on the history of the family and submitted that this alleviated to a certain extent the horror of the crime. He then violently attacked Josephine, whom the public prosecutor had eulogized seeking to show that the young Pierre had been the victim of an abandoned woman. He refused to accept the theory of premeditation and insisted on extenuating circumstances. If you condemn Pierre to death, he said, you will punish two other people. Do not forget he is married and a father. Cries of indignation, whistling, and hooting greeted the verdict of the jury at Toulouse Court last night in the case of Count Pierre de Ressac, a member of one of the oldest and noblest families in the region. He was accused of murdering his illegitimate child, a baby boy of nearly two years old. The facts were uncontested. The motive for the crime was family pride. Lest the illegitimate baby would stain the reputation of the noble family. The jury found lack of premeditation where premeditation was proved throughout and extenuating circumstances where there were none. Before such a verdict, the judge could inflict no harder penalty than 10 years penal servitude. The reluctance of the French juries to invoke the guillotine is a familiar thing in these days but it was not expected that a jury would go as far as it could toward acquitting a guilty man whom universal morality would regard as a monster. The whole of the French press is naturally shocked at this new and extraordinary failure of the jury system. Pierre may have escaped the guillotine, but a ruder message points out that the sentence for Pierre is much more severe than it appears at first sight, as all terms of penal servitude exceeding seven years must be followed by an equal period of banishment in French Guyana. After that he must work in the colony as a settler for ten years and remain under police supervision. He will not be allowed to leave French Guyana until the expiration of the full term of twenty years years. Pierre ruined five lives when he threw that baby into the canal. He ruined, of course, the babies, his own, poor Josephine's, his new wife's, and his new child. Thanks for listening. Subscribe for more. Bye.